Hi, I'm Lori. Thank you for joining my channel today. I'm a nature photographer and digital artist. I love to share tips and tricks for shooting and editing in a creative way. So take just a minute, click like and subscribe, and we'll jump into today's project. Everyone. So in today's episode, I want to talk to you about winter whites. Whites and snow can be challenging to shoot as well as edit. So I want to talk to you about the after effects because we don't always have the time maybe to get the exposure just right in camera. And sometimes we need to make adjustments in post-processing. Sometimes your snow can look a little yellow or it can even have a blue cast. So I'm going to go through a couple images and share some tips here in Lightroom Classic. So first, you always want to start with checking your histogram, especially with images with snow, because often you may not have exposed your whites all the way over. So you can see what a difference bringing those whites over makes to this image. Now, you also may need to bring down your highlights depending on how bright your scene was. So bringing those highlights down, but raising your whites all the way over to the right is going to give you that clear, kind of crisp white, but not over, over bright. Now, those are changes that we can make overall to our image. So those are holistic changes to the image. But I want to give you a couple tips if you have some small adjustments you want to make. So for this image in particular, I may want to go in and add a linear gradient. Now this linear gradient I can apply to the bottom of my image all the way up and let it kind of fade off the scene. What we can do now is actually reduce the saturation. That's going to ensure that I don't have any color cast from the sky, from the trees. It's just going to give me, you can see how blue the snow looks. It's giving me that beautiful white snow. Now I can also reduce the highlights again to make sure that they're not, that it's not just real harsh and blown out. That also helps bring out a little bit more details of the snow, which I like. I want it to look really natural. Now, if you have really harsh blue tones, you could also play with your temperature slider. So you can see if I add some yellow, what it does versus if I add more blue. Now I'm going to keep that back where it was. And my trick is just to reduce the saturation. So that's what we did to get this snow looking less blue and a lot brighter. Now I can still play around with my image if I wanted to um, go back to the basic panel and maybe I still want the image to be a little moodier and dark. You can still do that. You could add a vignette, but what we've done with these couple tips is just make sure our snow looks really authentic and unique and accurate. All right, so let's look at another snowy image. You can see this one as well. A lot of times our snow is going to come out. Now we've also got a pretty boring sky here, but as we think about the snow, we can come in and do that same linear gradient and you can do it to a whole area. You could do it to a corner. I'm just going to reduce that saturation. I'm also going to go ahead and bump the whites. So taking those whites all the way over. Now we can make sure they're a little blown out. So I'm just going to go down to the tone curve and lower them just a little bit. And that way we can check we don't have anything blown out, but we've made it a lot whiter. I'm going to even bump the whites a little bit more. And we can also come down to our tone curve and right there where we have the whites, we can increase that a little bit. Now I always like to bring down the highlights so it's not too harsh on your eyes and it's not taking away from this scene. You want, don't want it to be glaring white. You always want to check your blinkies up here in your histogram to make sure it's not blown out and we fixed that. So that's a couple ways to address this white. Now that we have this in our mask, we can also come down. You can always add a little dehaze. If you want to make it a little softer and dreamy, you can also reduce the clarity on your snow. So we've gone from this look to much brighter, much um, crisper white scene. So I think that works really nice. Now to address our sky here, we would want to use our sky mask. And that's going to be an easy adjustment to add a mask, select the sky, and then we can come in and increase the temperature in that sky, give it a little more blue tones, make it look more like a beautiful winter scene. 
Now, if you have snow on a building where you want to enhance that, I would definitely do that separate from your snow because you may not want the building to be as harsh bright. So in this example, I would come in and let's try selecting subject and see what it does. Okay, did a pretty good job there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the whites and I'm gonna increase them just a little bit. I don't wanna lose all this kind of historical quality of the building and I don't want it to be too bright. So I'm just gonna keep that exposure, reduce the highlights, um, but I want to reduce the saturation. I really don't want those blue or yellow tones. I want it to be a lot, um, definitely white. So I'm just going to pump the white a little bit more. And so I think that is better. That was before and that's after. So it's just a very subtle difference. Now for our snow, I'm going to come in and add another mask and I'm just going to use the brush and I'm going to keep my flow and density kind of low, reduce the size of my brush, and I'm just going to brush real lightly on this snow area. And then I'm going to come in and just check the brightness. I'm going to pop that a little bit so the snow stands out from the house and also reduce the saturation so it's really white. And just come in and do the whites. Now I could add some exposure, but I really don't necessarily want it brighter. I just want it whiter and a little bit of a separation from the building. So I'm just coming in and popping that a little bit. So that's a way that you can think about your whites in different areas. So the snow would be one adjustment, the house, and then the building. So for this image, I would actually do three adjustments. Now we could try doing a background mask. Let's see what that does. Okay, so it selected everything, including the trees and sky. But now what I can do is subtract, and I can subtract the sky. And so now we just have the trees and the snow. And what I can do is subtract and do color range. And I'm going to subtract these trees. There we go. Now we've got a pretty good mask to work with. So don't forget to use your subtract and use all the other tools available. And we can also refine it. So I'm going to take it that way. And now we've got a really, really good mask to work with. So what I'm going to do is the same trick. I'm going to reduce my saturation so that there's no blue or yellow. I'm going to increase these whites just a little bit, not too much, reduce the highlights, maybe not as much on this image. I want that snow to look kind of fresh fallen and you can see before and after. So now we've done our three edits of our snow. Our, our roof is the freshest snow and it looks very white and bright. And then we've got the ground and we've got our building. Now from here, we can go back to our basics and we could decide if we want to overall brighten our image a little bit. We can do that, but that's not going to change the three edits that we've already made. We can also adjust our blacks and maybe modify our tree detail. So you can continue to make those basic edits, but you've got your whites all lined up and looking really nice. So again, that's the before and after. So when you are editing your winter whites, don't forget to play around with saturation and use all of those fantastic mask tools to really customize your image and make your whites look realistic and really beautiful.